can you aim? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing, Mark? You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah. Lovely, mate. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming and joining us today on Curty TV, mate. It's all much right. appreciated. Can everyone just just making sure everyone can hear you in in the chat quick? Can everyone hear Mark? Uh, who's even watching? Uh, quite a few, mate. At the minute, we have got forty odd people watching. A minute, all your family's involved as well. They're all watching. Your mum, your niece, brothers, sisters. So yeah, they're all watching. Um, oh, my dad just rang me, but I guess he forgot that I had this at six, six o'clock. Right. Okay. Right, Mark. Just uh, while we start, we get started. Can we hear? Yeah, they can hear you. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us, mate. It's much appreciated. Um, go straight in there with, with the uh, the preparation of your fights during during this lockdown. Look, can you give us a little insight of um, of, of your your process? You know, building up to the fight and obviously up until you 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 come into the match uh, the the weekday bubble. Um. Well, pretty much, it's just. Uh... Uh, in the gym seven or eight weeks um for like five six days a week yeah and then as you get a little bit closer like four or five weeks out i train twice a day so i'll get up and go running at six o'clock and then go to work and then get home from work straight to the gym what is it you, you do mark is a pl is it your plasterer is that is that right plastering yeah yeah do you like that or or you just uh you just it's doing right. it and doing it the soon. Yeah, I'm assuming that's your big plan ahead. It's hard work as well <laughs> because obviously plastering is quite a physical job. So of course it is. As much as I'm going to work, I'm probably doing a bit of training on my forearms and that as well. For sure, yeah, hundred percent. And what about uh, up on? You know, when you enter the bubble one fight week, obviously a few days before with, with this whole lockdown thing. What, what, what's your process yeah. with the bubble? It's boring. I can't tell you how boring it is. So I've got. <laughs> Got Jared wandering around my room. I've got the Xbox over there. We're just trying yeah. to connect it up so we can watch the show tonight because we're not yeah, allowed yeah. in the show. Okay. Oh, we was, and then we're not allowed. Oh well. Um, hopefully you can yeah, get no, that basically, yeah. So basically, we got here Wednesday. You have your COVID test at two o'clock, and then you go back to your room until the next day at about one, two o'clock. Yeah. Until you get your results. You're not allowed down to eat. You got to order your food to your room. They leave it in a little bag outside your door. Yeah, a little doggy bag. They, yeah, they walk off. That's it. You you can't go to no restaurant because there, there isn't none. They're all so, closed. So it's a bit like a glorified prison, then, mate. By the sounds of things. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit more e like easier on you when you get your test. But obviously, if you're negative, you're you're allowed out to go for a walk or something. Got, but... got you, yeah. But until you get your test results, you're you're stuck in in there, I suppose. Um, can you yeah, just um, go back to when you first sort of started, mate? Just wonder, wonder now, how did you get into the game of boxing? And um, also, what age did you start at? Uh, so basically, my mum took me and my brother uh, to a local club up the road from us. What, what uh, club? We was six and seven. I was in Weacock. Oh, right, yeah. So, um, yeah, in, in Weacock in like Waterlooville area. And uh, we was both six and seven. And then... Went from there, really. Stayed at the club. Um, progress had a few like amateur fights. I say am a few amateur fights. Way before that, we was just training because obviously we was too young. Yeah, of course. Um, I think you're allowed to box. Uh, it's either ten or eleven. I can't really remember. Mm. Um, yeah, had a few amateur fights, and then don't know. Would mess around and go out with your mates and whatever when you're that age. Like you and do. Then, like you do. <laughs> Yeah, because you've got to have a life as well, you? especially if you're a kid. 100%. 100%. Um, and then I'd say more so my dad then took over than my mum. And then my dad got involved. And then he was making sure we was going all the time. And then Keep, keep you in check. Just, just, just had a chat with us. Basically, you either got to do it or give it up because you yeah. got to give it 100%. And... Yeah, just just stuck yeah, to good. it from there. Nice, really. nice. and um, obviously, correct correct me if I am wrong, Mark. But we, you had a pretty impressive um, amateur career. I think you you won. You was finest of the schoolboys. I think you won three, three. Um... Yeah, I, I got to the I got to the finals of the schoolboys. Yeah. I'm not one for making excuses, but a lot of people said that I won it. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that. the same. To be honest, from from a, from a few few heads, so. A uh, loss is a loss, whatever that was years ago. Yeah, um, of course. But yeah. Anyway, I, 
I had two uh, two more fights after that with the same fella, and I beat him twice. So right, okay, there you go. Safe to say, I got For a, That's a piece of mind, I suppose, that as well. But you know, yeah. And uh, and you went on to I national won. titles. Was it three? Was it two, two or three? Three. Yeah, I won the youth, junior, youth, and senior as the first year. So good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, and obviously already you're putting putting Waterlooville and, and your hometowns of Waterlooville and Portsmouth on the map uh, in your amateur career and now you're looking to do that in the professional uh, world and, and you've taken it by storm winning, winning seven seven fights out of seven looking good along the way um, can you tell us about your first professional fight and, and sort of your, the feeling building up to it and, and obviously the moment when you when your arm was raised and you won won the fight what was the feeling like? Uh, to- to be honest, they reckon your your first fight's your most important because obviously you only get one debut, don't you? And of course. That that's your chance where you, the fight you've got to win, basically, isn't it? Because of yeah. obviously the, the build up you got to have, especially being signed with a big promoter and being yeah. on TV or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's good feeling. Yeah. Um, same as every fight, really, getting your hand raised. It, yeah. it, and does that ever get? Thing. Does it ever get? Um, but is there any that are better than others, or do, you, do they all they all feel as good as each other? When when you know every time your hands raised, they feel as good as the last, or do they feel better as you go yeah. on? Yeah, I suppose if if you're fighting for like a title, like back in the amateur days, if, if you'd have a normal club bout and you win it, it's great. But mm. if you get in the championships and you box Friday, Saturday, Sunday in like the quarters, semis, and the finals, and then you get your hand raised in the finals and you win your belt. That that probably means more yeah, to you because of, of obviously it's a competition isn't it? and it's about to keep for life. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And then you, you mentioned a little bit about your uh, big promoter there. Obviously, you've signed a deal with with one, in my opinion, one of the best promoters um, in the world, in in Frank Warren. Um, what was that feeling yeah. like, and how how did it come about? Like how how did it all go, come to? Uh, basically, when I won the seniors, I was sort of at a stage whether to stay as a, an amateur for another year and do the same again, hopefully to have won another senior title or turn pro. Um, but basically, I, I was like pick, getting picked for England to go to like Sheffield and to do like uh, I think it was like the Commonwealth Games and just cuts like that really mm. and there was other people getting picked over me and it was like I was there just to make up the numbers for sparring which I didn't really want to do because obviously I was giving up my weekends yeah. going to Sheffield staying in the GB flats and that obviously it was a good experience sparring and training and that but it's not fair if other boys get picked up over you that no. didn't even so, win so, at Mark, was that so. sorry to interrupt is that, is that almost like they were using you in a way is that, is that what it felt in like in a way yeah Basically, yeah, they they just take like twenty, thirty boys up there, and they've got like five that are picked before the weekends even started. Got you. And they they have you all up there just for training and what have you. And if if that person that's picked over you has to pull out for an injury, you're the backup basically. Yeah, so, got you, got you. Um, yeah. so yeah, after I've, I've watched um watched most of your fights back, I watched your last fight live. I was very impressed, I must say. Um, and you look classy. You seem like you're learning um, almost like with every fight. Um, do you feel that way? Do you feel like you're learning it with every fight and as you go along? Yeah, definitely. O- obviously, stopping people in like the first rounds and that, you're not learning nothing. But no. my last fight was the biggest learning fight. Obviously, eight rounds. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I suppose get getting the rounds in is most important. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah <laughs> they're stepping you up. Uh, yeah, and and, and obviously better. if if you're fighting someone who who who's obviously picked hand picked to to go longer, then you got to expect to go longer. And then I think yeah, as I said, it looks like you're getting better with every fight, mate. And it's a pleasure to watch, yeah. if I'm honest. Okay. Um, another one. Where do you see yourself in five years, Mark? The big Hopefully picture. In another country, relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, obviously, I'm only 22. Um, in five years time I don't know I'd love to be like on the world level world world champion or whatever mm. but you've got a dream big haven't you for it to of course, happen of I course suppose. you have of course you have uh, someone's put steel plaster in in the chat Andy Webb do you know <laughs> yeah that's what I work with Andy <laughs> uh, but you're, well, you're five foot five foot eleven Mark um, which 
for a lightweight, it's pretty pretty tall, you know. You're big, big framed, um, big, big size for your weight, uh, and a, and a massive yeah. hitter as well, which I've been told by a few people, including some of your old sparring partners. Um, do you do you struggle finding uh, the, you know the smaller opponents? Do you struggle against the smaller opponents? Do you find it tricky? Is it awkward or? It's it's probably harder than fighting someone your own size, if you know what I mean, because they're smaller and I don't know, it's just annoying. But then again, yeah. as an amateur, I, I would have had to have fought a couple of boys that were taller than me, long, gangly arms and that. But you can't pick and choose how big your opponents are, can you? you just got to no. get in and do what you got to do. Fight who's ever in front of you. That's the that's the sort of thing you got to do. Yeah, um, yeah, and obviously being that that height, having the power you've got. Um, you're probably going to have the option later in your career to to, to step up the weights as well. Um, is that something you, yeah. you you're going to be probably looking at, or are you quite comfortable at lightweight now? Or not not anytime soon because I'm doing the weight easy. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel drained or nothing. Obviously, you get hungry, but that's part of it. If you yeah. don't get hungry and someone says they're not, then they're lying to you. If they're in the boxing world, I think. Unless you're not doing it right and you don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I can imagine that as one of the biggest struggles, and it the hunger part of, of yeah. the camp and stuff. Yeah, the, the the fighting side of it's the easy part, but the yeah. dieting is it's the hardest, the hardest bit, and yeah. the training. I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, right, yeah. Moving on to uh, Saturday, your opponent. Um, he's, yeah. he's only been stopped six times in in what's he had forty forty odd fights, forty five fights or something like that. Yeah, forty five fights. I yeah, and, and he's been stopped only six times. Are you you going to be looking for the stoppage, or are you just going to take the fight as it comes? Um, no, no, never look for the stoppage because if you go looking for it, it might not happen, will it? And then you make yourself look stupid, make mistakes. But if if it's there, then it's there. If you know what I mean. Um, but then again, if I can get eight rounds in, that's great because obviously then I'm I'm learning again. So. Yeah, that's what I was going to get on to. I think if 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 you could get a late stoppage, that'd be the ideal scenario, wouldn't it? Like yeah. you're getting you're getting yeah. the rounds in and then um, and everything. But I think rounds at this stage of anyone's career, especially being only 22, Mark, um, is probably the most important thing right now, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, can you give us a little prediction for tomorrow? Or are you just gonna? Uh, I couldn't tell you how it goes. Normally, that the opponents they start quick and that, and then they they want to have a go with you. And then when you hit them after three or four rounds, you start wearing them down. Yeah. Who knows if he Who wants knows. to stand and have a fight? Uh, I'm sure I'll give him a good one. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I've got no doubt about that, mate. I've got no doubt about that. Well, right, we did do a little uh, few quick quick fire questions. Yeah, is that is that what you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, football or rugby? Man, <laughs> no, I, do you know what? I had a feeling you was going to say that, but when I ripped the question I down, I can tell you who's who, who's in what cup or anything. I don't no. follow football. I don't, I don't even know what offside is. Purely boxing. <laughs> yeah, just boxing. Really. Uh, McDonald's or KFC? Probably McDonald's. McDonald's. Tea or coffee? Tea. Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Favorite drink? Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite meal? Chinese. Favourite restaurant? Uh, burger and lobster. Nice, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, what If you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make weight easy. <laughs> yes. Um, Favourite holiday destination? Um, I don't know. I'd probably say Tenerife because I've been there more times than I could count. <laughs> yeah, good old Tenerife. Can't be a bit of Tenerife. Uh, and no. pine pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, disgusting. No. <laughs> uh, now a bit more boxing related. Uh, your best best sparring partner that you've had or come across? As in best best person. Uh, we, we, I'll tell you. We we'll say we we'll say ability wise, and then like your most enjoyable sparring partner, the one you used to have, you know, good good tussles with. Uh, most best sparring partner, well, best sparring I've had was probably Josh Taylor or Liam Walsh, one of them two. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I've been doing a bit of sparring with Sean Cooper, my last opponent. Um, yeah. He's good sparring because he's durable, as you see in the fight. Yeah. And he comes to give you a go as well. So, yeah, no, it's nice, good sparring. Nice. Um, what about the hardest hitter? you've come up against either fights or sparring uh, can't, you can't say yourself I'd say, Mark. Back, I'd say I haven't really been 
hit, as in to say, oh, that, that hurt. But back in the amateurs, I had a fight with an Australian fella. Um, that was in the seniors. He was quite strong. I yeah. remember him uh, being strong, yeah. Okay. Um, but no, your, what about your uh, your boxing idol, someone you've sort of always watched, looked up to, admire? I'm sure there's a few, but is there anyone that stands out? I don't know about look up to, but probably my favourite fighter. I don't know. It's got to be Canelo and Lomachenko, maybe. Yeah. Favourite fight. Yeah, favourite to watch sort of thing. Um, yeah. What is your favourite boxing punch? Um, I don't know, you know. We've just, been just mixing punches up, so I can tell you. Combinations. Whatever, any, any punch that lands and wins. Yeah, whatever puts them down, right? Uh, yeah. jo- Fury or Joshua? I say Fury. Yeah, I agree. Just. I um, favourite fighter? You've already covered that one. Um, what a boxing fight you'd like to see happen in 2021? Either yourself or, or any other in the boxing world? Hmm. I don't know, you know. That's a hard one. Joshua Fury's got to, um, be, got to be one of them. You'd... Yeah, I'd like to see Eubank and Liam Williams. I'd like to see them have yeah. go. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Very right. good. Um, and also, if you could fight anyone in the world, past or present, who, who, would, uh, who would it be? Just to like share the ring with, with someone. World champion. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Um, just gonna is it all right if we ask uh, ask just a question or two from the chat? Is that all right? Yeah, I can't see none of these questions. No, you Let won't. Go on my, my phone, you might be able, able to get able it. See it. Yeah, you might be able I'm to get it up on. Phone, um, Where yeah. will I find it? Go on. Uh, type it on Facebook. Curty.tv. Kurt. Uh, just read them out. Yeah. yeah, I can read them out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll watch over that. Have a look what he's looking at. Is it is it K with a t- K? No, no K- C, K- C, K- C. 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 Curty uh, TV, yeah? Yeah, Curty.tv. Oh, yeah, it says here you're live. Yeah, got it. Yeah, so uh, we had a few questions coming earlier. Any questions, um, anyone? Pop them in. Um, and you look classy. You seem like you're learning. Oh, let me um, turn it down. <laughs> Oh, this is a bit slow, this is, this long. Yeah, it might be delayed. It might be delayed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me get one back up. We had one earlier. I can't remember what he said. He said something about, um, like, with the COVID, is the, is the preparations obviously different? How does that affect you, like, the pros and cons of it? Uh, things like that don't bother me. Um, I'd much prefer to have, like, friends and family here because it's, it's the atmosphere and everything and you have a good night. Um, but as it stands at the minute, Obviously, no one can come here. Um, but, yeah, like I said, things like that don't bother me. Just get on with it. Get in there and do and Get the do. job done. Yeah, no yeah. nonsense. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, Mark, I think, you know, we're, we're sort of much done. One one last big one. Um, do you see yourself becoming a world champion one day? Yeah, without a doubt. Good answer. Good answer. We look forward to watching that and watching your journey. Um Oh, here we go. There's one from Jack. How different is amateur training to professional? Very different. Very different. A lot harder. Stay amateur. We got, we got a message from Joanne, which I think is your mum, Mark. Get to her. We, want, we want it done in the first uh, round. Get in and get out. I think she's my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Will Rutledge, um, Canelo versus Saunders. Who wins and why? I'm going to say Canelo. Um, I'd like to see Saunders win because obviously he's English and what have you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just can't see it, to be honest. No. He's got to I be think... very, very fit, and he to yeah. either run no, for 12 rounds and not make no mistakes. And if he gets caught, without a doubt, he's going over. Yeah, it's tough. If, if there's anyone who can beat him, in my opinion, I think it is Billy Joe. Saunders, but um, yeah. is there anyone it's now? Can... Too, it? Yeah, it's just is there anyone that can beat him? I, I personally don't think so either. But um, no. Uh, oh, we got a few coming in. We we'll have one or two more. Uh, what's the mental part of? Um, I think we might have covered this a little bit of, of the training, mental or physically. Um, 
what what's more hard yeah well, what's the toughest part so men- the mental side of the build up and training or or physically no, I think physical you- training physical training and the dieting Draining yourself out of bed at like quarter to six in the morning and yeah. just rolling out of bed and going for a four or five mile run <laughs> yeah for sure going to the gym and doing a couple of hours in there it's all hard work someone else is quite interesting one Joe Woods Mackinson or Congo both fighting tomorrow another local lad I don't know I'd like to see Mikey win but it's a hard fight in it so very tough who knows matter of one punch can change the whole fight it's 50-50 fight I think for me yeah um, and then we've got someone we love cheesecake that's, that's not very relevant but thank you <laughs> right Mark listen mate it's been an absolute pleasure and um, I'm pretty sure most of us lot on, on here will be tuning in tomorrow I know I definitely will um, as I did your last fight and I, I wish you all the luck not that you'd lead it mate I'm sure you'll get the job done um, in good yeah, style as well fantastic. hopefully um, yeah thanks for coming in mate again and, and I, I do appreciate it good luck in your career and I'll be looking forward to watching how it unfolds and, and how, how it comes so all the best Mark nice yeah? one thank you cheers Mark thank cheers, you mate then. bye Bye, bye.